Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were booed when a clip of their Oprah Winfrey interview was aired at last night's National Television Awards. After Sir Trevor MacDonald introduced the collection of the year's most iconic TV moments, a montage aired with scenes from the Royals' infamous interview. While the booing did not appear on the ITV Live telecast, attendees revealed that the audience loudly jeered and booed once the Duke and Duchess appeared on screen. A source in the audience told, Meghan and Harry were shown on screen during a montage of TV moments from the last 12 months. Immediately, there was audible booing throughout the arena. It was as though they were pantomime villains. The event at London's O2 Arena is a highlight of the showbiz calendar that is attended by some of Britain's biggest stars, suggesting that the Sussexes' reputation has soured even among the celebrity elite. A second source, a celebrity who asked not to be named, said, when the clip came up of Meghan there were boos from the audience. Some shouted out and there was laughing. There were a few embarrassed faces but sadly Meghan was obviously not too popular on the night. The Sussex's bombshell two-and-a-half-hour sit-down interview with Oprah in March was watched by over 17 million people around the globe. The couple accused a royal family member of racism, suggesting the relative had asked how dark their son would be, said they had been driven out of Britain, in part, by discrimination, and accused the palace machinery of failing to support a suicidal Meghan. Harry revealed an astonishing rift with his father, claiming his family had cut him off financially while suggesting the Queen had been badly advised and had cancelled a meeting scheduled at Sandringham. Meghan also accused Kate of making her cry, suggested senior royals plotted to ensure Archie would never have a title or security, and said officials had failed to stand up for the couple against racist commentary, while allowing to protect others. The interview immediately generated a backlash after fact-checkers revealed a string of inaccuracies, while Oprah also came in for criticism for allowing the couple's inflammatory and damaging claims to go unchallenged. There was also anger at their decision to publicly trash their family when Prince Philip was ill. Piers Morgan was among those who criticized the sit-down, saying he didn't believe a word of what Meghan had claimed. This sparked a deluge of complaints to Ofcom, who sensationally cleared him of wrongdoing earlier this month and defended his right to free speech. The UK's broadcasting watchdog called attempts to silence the Mail Online columnist a chilling restriction on freedom of expression after the Duchess of Sussex was among the wave of people who complained that his questioning of her account of royal racism and suicidal thoughts was harmful and offensive to viewers. After his victory, Mr Morgan tweeted a picture of the Queen at her husband's Windsor funeral and said, amid all the debate about Meghan Markle's mental health, has anyone given a thought for what the Queen's had to endure this year as the Sussexes have continually trashed her family and the monarchy while she lost and mourned her beloved husband of 73 years? Just disgraceful. The Duke and Duchess' popularity has hit an all-time low as the couple continue to suffer the fallout from their interview. Positive opinion of Harry, 36, who now lives in an 11 million pound mansion in Montecito, California, with his wife and two children, has fallen by 9 points from 43% in April to 34% now. Meghan, 40, has seen a steady decline in her popularity this year, with positive opinion at 30% in March, falling to 29% in April, and dropping a further 3 percentage points to 26% now. Former royal editor Duncan Larkholm, who has reported on Harry since he was a teenager, said going from being the most popular royal to where he is now, barely on speaking terms with his family, must be really hard for him and probably adds to his anger. Meghan too was so welcomed in the beginning. But now the UK has lost trust in her. Their popularity has totally nosedived, he told Closer magazine. It's worrying to think what Harry has left if his American life fails for him. I don't think he'll be welcomed back as a working royal, but he would as a brother, son and grandson. If Harry's not on the balcony at Buckingham Palace, waving to the crowds, on the day his father or his brother becomes king, then I think the public will be done with him. YouGov blames poor responses to their statements surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and the withdrawal from Afghanistan, for the recent drop in their popularity. The couple were criticized for wading into Afghanistan crisis with woke word salad statement, in which they said they were speechless and feeling the many layers of pain. The lengthy statement, released via the couple's Slick Archul Foundation website, calls on followers to support organizations including the World Central Kitchen but failed to say how much they would be personally donating or details of how they would help. YouGov also cited as their Oprah Winfrey interview, in which the couple accused an unnamed member of the royal family of making a racist comment about what skin tone their son Archie may have. Prince Harry declined to say who made the comment, but stressed it wasn't the Queen or Prince Philip.
the couple sent shockwaves through the monarchy in January last year when they announced their intention to step down as senior members of the royal family and embark on a new life across the Atlantic. But they've attracted criticism after expressing a desire for privacy, then laying bare their split from the firm in their explosive Oprah sit-down and signing multi-million pound deals with Netflix, Spotify and Apple TV. Harry also revealed he's publishing a tell-all memoir with Penguin Random House in 2022 as part of a lucrative four-book deal believed to be worth up to £29 million. Duncan Larcombe acknowledged that the Duke has found a degree of freedom in now being able to say what he wants, but believes the couple have totally isolated themselves as a result of their rift with the royals. He added that there is now tremendous pressure on the Sussexes to deliver and make a success of their shiny new life in the States, suggesting they're more trapped than ever in this new life they've created. Mr. Larkham said the fact they've caused such an uproar for both the firm and in the media, they now don't have the option of failing as it would be the ultimate humiliation. If Netflix aren't happy and the production doesn't get the audiences that they're expecting, they won't give them another contract, he observed. They've entered a commercial world and it's cutthroat. The Sussexes are not not the most unpopular royals, that dubious honor goes to Prince Andrew, who has an overall negative rating of 83% and a positive rating of just 6% due to his connection to pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. The public's favorite royal, as ever, is the Queen with 80% of the population having a favorable opinion of the monarch. In July, it was revealed that the Sussexes' interview had been nominated for an Emmy Award. Oprah with Meghan and Harry, a CBS primetime special is nominated in the Outstanding Hosted Non-Fiction Series or Special category, it was confirmed. The winners will be announced at the 73rd Primetime Emmy Awards on September 19 with U.S.-based Harry and Meghan up against Stanley Tucci, searching for Italy and my next guest needs no introduction with David Letterman.